Okay, I got my control panel open. Not good news. Well, mixed news. Um, those ports right there should have joystick connectors. And they're all empty. Uh, I've got monitor controls. We got a volume knob. That's cool. Down in here, there's an extra bolt. Not sure where that's supposed to go. And right here, we have some Molex connectors. I'm thinking we haven't got all the way into this because I need to take this front piece off. I'm thinking that they hacked US Molex onto what should have been the Japanese pins going over to here. Uh, wiring, wiring pinouts are available. So I can order the connectors and the pins from Japan or England and should be able to remount them there as long as they're long enough. Hopefully the cables are long enough. I'll show you how, what I had to do to get into this locked panel. Took the back panel off the monitor. There's six security bits, security screws here. It's also attached to this light panel. So the light panel, uh, there's two screws here, two screws here, screw in that corner, and a screw in that corner. And then, careful, you have to unplug the fluorescent fixture power. And then the back piece comes off. Uh, when the back piece comes off, you're greeted with this. Uh, okay. Now what you need to do is get to the latch in the control panel. So let's see if you can see what I did here. I took a coat hanger and I bent it at the end. And let's see if I can get the light. There we go. See, there's a little latch in there. Put the coat hanger on it. Yeah, it's hard to get a shot of where it is, but you can see right there. Just bent the coat hanger, put it around that from the speaker hole, bent it back, and then the control panel lifts up. Um, piece of cake, actually. So, there you go. If you have to get in the back of one of these, it's not as easy as you'd think. I thought it was only going to be six torque screws, but because it's hooked to that light fixture, it was a little bit more involved. Uh, so now, I should be able to get the front panel off. There's this hole here and on the other side. There's a bolt here and on the other side and one here that you can't get to without opening the control panel. So that's why I couldn't just take the front panel off. I had to take the back panel off first to get the control panel open. And once the control panel is open, now I can take off the front piece. Um, It looks like the actual lock that would hold this in place is locked in the open position. So it's not locked closed? No, I think I'm lying. I think when you turn the key, this cam goes over there and pushes that back. Yeah, so. Um, all the locks have been drilled, but all of these special hasps are still on them one right here. So as long as I can find locks of the right length and with whatever screw or hex or whatever size these hasps fit, then I should be able to rekey the machine using standard locks. So I need to take one or two of these off and see if it's some oddball uh, locking mechanism that's not just a standard lock. So there we go, that's how I got my control panel open, which is how I'm going to get access to take the front panel off. A uh, little shot of the controls while I'm in here. Again, these are all US HAP joysticks and micro switch buttons. None of the Japanese joysticks or buttons that I prefer in a Japanese cabinet but we'll see what we can do about that.